talks with uh, Tata Steel, a knowledge series powered by Tata Steel Industrial Consulting. This is a four-part series where senior leaders from Tata Steel share their experience on best manufacturing practices and industrial relations. The guest for this second episode is uh, Sarajit Jha, Tata Steel, Chief Business Transformation and Digital Solutions. Sarajit is a domain expert on digitalization in the manufacturing sector. Sarajit began his uh, career as Tata Administrative Services Officer in 2000. He is an economics graduate from Presidency College, Calcutta, and an MBA from Xavier's Institute of Management. Welcome to the show, uh, Sarajit. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Uh, okay. So, uh, how do you think you know digitalization is transforming the manufacturing sector? You know, Can, you know. Can we also call the whole digitalization process as uh, smart uh, manufacturing? Hey, yes and no, uh, <laughs> like most things. Yeah. Uh, but but largely yes, and and the reason I say that is because if you see what's happening, uh, anything in anything in manufacturing would require first a design a discovery process. What are you manufacturing, etc. It will yeah. then require a design process. How do you set up your factory? What's your layouts? It will then require a development process, which is you make your factory. And it will then have a delivery process, which you make the goods that the factory was designed to make. Uh, the same is true for actually software development. The same is true for manufacturing. The same is true for everything. I think today uh, in the discovery process has got completely accelerated by digital. So. You know, if you want to search for, say, quality, if you want to search for yield, if you want to search for benchmarks, if you want to search for experts, uh, your first port of call is to go into the digital world. So that's largely sort of done and dusted. Yeah. If you look at the design, uh, you have AutoCAD, AutoCAD, your tools, you've got 3D printing uh, potential for fabrication. You can make prototypes in no time. The cost of experimentation has really gone down. Uh, when you're looking at the development phase, you're looking at prefabricated. You can be from ground zero to, say, manufacturing out in 12 to 18 months, a process that could take as long as five years, six years earlier. Uh, just see what's happening on prefabricated chips, uh, designing, you know, which is the heart of digital everywhere else in the world. Yeah. And then in terms of the delivery, ultimately, any plant is run for yield energy, throughput quality, and productivity. Those are the outcome metrics. And in each of those metrics, there are multiple things that uh, can be, uh, you know, uh, impacted by on digital. And a lot of, there's a lot of AI, there's a lot of uh, remote operations with uh, now 5G coming in. Uh, there is a lot of integration of sustainability, which is coming in, which digital can actually put on steroids. So the entire thing, how you discover the manufacturing process, how you design the manufacturing process, how you develop the manufacturing process, and then the delivery of the production itself. Uh, has completely changed. And in a way, I would say that the productivity learning curve ha has got steepened. But bear in mind that the fruits of such toil and uh, initiatives are also very skewed. 20% uh, of uh, the digital leaders are probably reaping 150% of the benefits and the balance 80% laggards are losing the 50%. So you come to 100% if you get what I mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, but tell me something, you know, uh, what has been the biggest uh, apprehension for companies, you know, in adapting digitalization in their shop floor or not? Is it the mindset? Is it the cost? Or uh, is it that they don't want to take, you know, the pain of change or pain of moving or that, that, that transitioning uh, process? What is it? Let me answer this in, in two ways. So all my life, I've been in some sort of a change management program. And you know, change is hard because you know when you take the word transformation, it comes from the word sort of metamorphosis, which yeah. means a complete change. And it's come from the butterfly. right? And uh, if you were to tell a caterpillar today that you know you will become a butterfly, the caterpillar will freeze or it will flight, run away or it will be absolutely taken back by fear. Yeah. But if you tell a, if you break it down into steps, you know, you tell the caterpillar, ki ab aap ke se so 
So it's a step it can do. And then you say, now you please unwind yourself and you open up. And then you say that, you know, uh, by the way, you're out, just feel something on the back of your shoulders and it might feel different. Then you say, look, can you move it? And, and can you move it a little fast and flap? And then you just give it a push, it flies away and you have a butterfly. So to break it into steps, I don't think often people understand the journey involved and break it into steps. The other thing that I've realized is every successful program has a why. Why do I want to do digital? Because yeah. everybody's not becoming Google or Amazon or a digital company like Microsoft. You know, you're still going to be an AI and a data company in, in a certain field. So your why should be very clear. Then you need a, a sort of, a, uh, you know, which is what I call the belief system, the why. After that, you need a capability system, people who can do the how for you. There'll be a seven layer IT architecture, there'll be need for plumbing, there'll be connectivity, compute, data, enterprise architectures, and all of that. And then you need a business KPI system which captures the value. Uh, I don't think uh, companies are able to put together all these three systems in a way that works for them. And as a result, one of the three things happens. Either the company starts and those guys who were the initial evangelist or energizers, they leave. They are like, nothing's supposed to happen here. Those people say, ah, these guys just talked. They did nothing, took some money for 12, 18 yeah. months and disappeared. So that's one stage. The companies that go a little further, they start a lot of pilots with a lot of excitement. And then many of those pilots peter out. Those companies also that stay through the pilots ultimately are not able to scale them or get the money that, uh, you know, or the initial transformation objectives. Uh, it's the companies that cross all these three hurdles and stay the course that ultimately have, uh, you know, an open playing field, as you said, you know. Uh, they can kind of for some time till the next wave catches up. Yeah. You know, life is like an open highway. I'm going to have it my way. But but do you see this trend in uh, in larger companies? Or is it mostly the SMEs, which is little apprehensive or is not able to manage the digitalization process or the digitalization transformation? See, I think all companies have digitalized to a certain extent. And, and uh, those companies that have are, come out yeah. from the COVID pandemic, see the very fact that we are having this uh, conversation on, you know, tool like StreamYard uh, yeah. goes on to say that it's moved earlier. This would have been you and me sitting with some recording cameras and a lot of prep, people traveling and burning a lot of carbon. So the very fact is that has changed and I don't see any substantial dilution of content or delivery or performance that's happening because of that. So all companies have adopted these bespoke tools. It's about the business model change, which is where the real hard yards come in. So unless a company changes its target operating model, which is how it changes and post that its business model, which is how does it identify, how does it create, how does it capture and how does it deliver value? Those questions, are fun, if they are not fundamentally changed, then you know you are still a kind of digitized company, but you have not become a digital company. And I think the two questions any digital company should ask itself is, am I an AI company? Which means that whatever AI can be used for, am I using it? And second is, am I a data company? Do I have a very scalable model of how I capture, manage, monitor, and monetize data? Yeah. So, so basically what you mean to say is that, you know, the companies, you know, uh, they want to include digitalization in the process, but they haven't been able to figure out the business outcome of it. And I think that's what is creating the gap. Across the value chain in each value cycle and in a repetitive manner where each cycle is taking them to a higher level of performance and sustaining them than where the last cycle left them. Right. Entropy okay. is there in any system and digital systems are no different. Okay. Uh, you know, digitalization also, you were talking about, you know, data and uh, digitalization also means real time uh, data. How has that improved the, uh, you know, productivity levels at the shop floor? 
I think Tata Steel has been driving productivity for a very long time. Yeah. There was a time that we used to make 2 million tons of steel with uh, 100,000 plus people on our rolls. Now we make 20,000, 22 million tons of steel with approximately 30,000 people on our rolls. Uh, what digital has allowed to happen is that yeah. Many of these gains are sustainable and they can be replicated much faster in the acquisitions that we are making. So, for example, we purchased NINL and yeah. the company was team. up and running in three months. The company which had been shut for two years was up and running in three months. Okay. Similarly, uh, you know, uh, Bhushan Steel, we acquired yeah. and we made it into TSM. Tata Steel Mira Mandli. And for the last four years, when the merger was announced, we had one month to actually do the merger. And we replicated all our systems and were able to extend it to it. And we've been able to seamlessly deploy our processes. So one, you're able to integrate and assimilate much faster. Two, you're able to bring them up to your standards much faster. And three, you're able to hence cross leverage the synergies that exist much faster. Okay, but in in many and companies, so at the and how do you do it at the shop floor? You do it at the shop floor by taking your practices which are digitally embedded and converting those practices. So we believe, yeah. and these are the 200, 225, 250 odd models which are running, which you then take to their data, and we have a sort of a framework where you know first you do uh, what we call as uh, cold trials, which is we take the data and show the operator that, look, if you were to use this model, this is how it will go. Then you do warm trials saying, operator, you are there, you can override the model, but you know you can see the model and uh, you know take its decision. And then we do a hot trial, which is to say that now the model is running, the operator is, can only do the overrides, etc. So that way the change management and oscillation happens. And I think I'll give one example, which is my favorite example. Yeah. We had a ferro alloys are very expensive. And we use ferro alloys uh, yeah. to alloy into steel. And uh, you have an SOP, a standard operating pro procedure for what is called trimming additions. And how much do you add optimally to get the same quality using the minimum amount of uh, ferro alloys given the process? So our whole idea was to make a model which can first equal the average operator. So we made a model that did that. Then we made a model which was equal to the best operator. Then we made a model which was better than the best operator's performance. Uh, so far, so good. But look at the, the best operator didn't become the best operator because he was waiting for a model to outdo him. The best operators quickly figured out that when the model was asking to add lesser than the SOP, then let's go with the model. The model is saying it must have figured something out. Maybe I missed it. And uh, you feed it and we are all good. Less uh, material, more output than the SOP. When the model was recommending more than the standard operating procedure, why would I listen to the model? I will use the standard operating procedure still. Yeah. So they were beating then the model every time. And again, the model learned this, that, okay, this happens. It generated the data it learned, became more intelligent. But overall, you know, the process is your performance goes up, up and up. Of course, there'll be operating regime changes, equipment will wear out, there'll be depreciation, there'll be uh, the standard depreciation of assets, all of that yeah. will happen. But largely the curve will be, it will not be a smooth curve up, but largely the curve will be up. Okay. How, how has uh, digitalization contributed to, you know, uh, you know, TQM or, you know, quality management or productivity, uh, you know, management practices? Has it made a great difference? I think yes. I think in 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 Tata Steel was always a powerhouse. We of total quality. I mean, we were a we were a process champion organization. We did seventy thousand pits. We are a Deming company. I mean, we eat, live, breathe processes. Yeah. Data is able to a strengthen the process. B tell you where the process is needs to become improved tells you what to improve within the sub processes but more importantly 
can tell you where the process is becoming a limitation and so it's always people process data and technology working hand in hand which takes you to the next level and the fact that we have become a you know benchmark leader under the tqm processes yeah. uh, i don't think would have happened if we had not used uh, data i mean the only other sort of people in that category in the group are tcs and and titan and all these companies are essentially like us ai and data companies which are in some business so tcs is in the business of software titan is in the business of yeah. marketing branding and watches and jewelry and we are in the business of steel but essentially uh without data you cannot take tqm to beyond a certain level okay and, and you know uh, uh, digitalization also says that you know uh, it has also made the uh, uh, shop floor a safer workplace you know there are less accidents there are less casualties that happen you know what has been you know your experience and how have you seen you know things changing you know post digitalization so i think safety is in one area where i personally believe that digitalization can and should do a lot more yeah are we a zero harm organization yet answer is no It, so it there not, are a lot of areas be. where digitalization can really help but i think safety is as much behavior uh having barriers as well as uh you know how you run the processes and I'll, and a bit about how you do consequence management so at a very lower level the moment you put a camera the behavior changes so digitalization can give you some of those low hanging fruits which by the way can be very very effective yeah second is you bring in intelligence into those cameras and you can do a lot of ai where you can catch slip trip fall you can see you can barrier it you can ensure that people are wearing pp or not is there a fire hazard etc so that kind of use case we have a connected worker a large very large ecosystem where we are running you know we are processing billion gig, you know uh gigabytes of data in milliseconds yeah. and uh, that is telling us where our people are are they are the right people in the right place is anybody uh, in an unsafe zone uh, we are receiving alerts are people in their place where they are working so productivity surveillance and safety are getting cup, coupled together uh, but there's a there's a lot more that can be done for in, example interlocks in vehicles so yeah. you know there are there are dumpers and sometimes they have their back dala open and they run into somebody or something or into an overhead wire so if the dala is open a dumper should not be allowed to back right so you know those interlocks can be put in place similarly the breath analyzers when you are dealing with uh, you know you know dealing with uh, people who are kind of driving large uh, trucks and dumpers in in your minds yeah. to see whether also kind of eye glazes as to catch as camera that are you falling asleep and then beepers going off so lots and lots of things can be done and uh, uh, from the very mundane like using and cameras etc to safety locks to converting primarily what are called administrative and passive barriers something that you know comes in the way of an uh, incident happening to making those active and dynamic using data and right. digital okay but how much of these processes can be automated like you were saying you know trucks with open uh, dala you know uh, it can be dangerous it can be fatal uh, so can these processes be automated where you know where there is a mechanism where any truck with an open dala will not be allowed to enter or some kind of mechanism the, and it, how much it, of it, it, it can be implemented yeah it, it can be the challenge is to get the connectivity and the maintenance of those sensors and having the right construct and the price point but technology on the compute on the sensorization on the connectivity is ever increasing uh, when a use case becomes technologically uh, can be technologically activated for want of a better term is something yeah. that you have to watch out for because the march of technology is always in one direction which is up uh, but the 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 point at which it can be democratized and be brought to certain use cases 
uh, and the time that it takes to do that versus the alternatives and and of course no organization has infinite resources but you have a lot of compelling prioritization priorities so when given your organizational priorities given something else and given something else it becomes uh, active becomes the case in point okay but what has been the role of unions and you know the workers you know have they been you know apprehensive about digitalization process or they have accepted because generally you know there is there is uh, you know it might not be with tata steel it could be general industry norm you know they 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 you know put up a little you know bit of resistance you know whenever there is some kind of automation digitalization uh, you know are put in place we have we have not seen our so very early we took the process of educating the unions saying that look so the union in tata steel has always worked hand in hand with management for whatever is good for the company yeah and we have always said that look there are three types of automation there is smart assist there is like you know you have a google map yeah uh there is uh, augmented intelligence where the machine can predict what's going to happen next and then there is autonomous we have said that look we are not really interested in autonomous we are not trying to reduce remove the human in the loop human and we have always told the union and and we believe ourselves that it is going yeah, to always, the the human on a machine will not be, it will always be the human with the smarter machine you can see yeah. that in chess you can see that in any sphere of human endeavor today yeah and uh, and the union has been and we have invested a lot of money in awareness we have invested a lot of money in training we continue to do so and uh, we we want to take the union along saying look for example let's take remote operations you can have yeah. you take the operation site away from uh, the asset so we are already running ice prog the center plant 6 kilometers away right and and how was one of the triggers we always told so the union said that look tata steel yeah. says that you know we are we allow work from home so work from home from whom every single day in the crisis when the country needed oxygen yeah. all our workers walked in every single day across three shifts and were there in the plant at a risk to themselves their families and their friends and to other colleagues like us also so now we are saying yeah that's correct so let's have remote operations remote operations does not mean autonomous operations so it's a dark plant but it is not administered by machines it is a dark plant administered by humans yeah. who are sitting 6 kilometers away and who can operate that plant from there and these are our nothing but our workers yeah i was coming to that you know the the you know uh, the basically digitalization has allowed you know using cloud through cloud digitalization is allowing controlling the shop floor remotely you know so will it actually allow a hybrid work culture or a work from home in the manufacturing do you see that happening uh, you know look i can speak for myself of, no, so very distant so so i am in what i call my office i am having to i still not because i live in a tata steel bungalow i still not been yeah. able to you know uh, kind of uh, figure this out as to what's the best location but for 3 years i have given up my office my office has actually become the remote operation center for tata steel okay uh, and uh, i have been able to operate seamlessly and in a way uh, it forces me to create the tools that allows me to act in tata steel so we have for example uh, something called my app which we are launching that's okay. the single pane of glass uh, glass that i deal with tata steel and our whole motto is to bring work to the employee rather than the employee going to the work but we are bringing work to the employee we are not kind of taking work away from the employee yeah so yes actually you know there has been lot of apprehensions about you know how digitalization will kill in roles and jobs but it is more about uh, reskilling and upskilling the existing workforce and uh, that is correct probably so that's the way so it's those four things right 
to get today whenever we are talking about this it's not so much about hybrid working or uh, office working or some mix of or you know or work yeah. from home it is about how do you define the future of work which means that work will become more data driven more amenable to technology how do you define the future of the worker so you have three species of workers you will have humans machines and androids if anybody wants to find out they can see you know uh, uh, that there are androids in the world already and they have citizenships yeah uh, then it is about uh, the future of the workplace which is it could be from anywhere it could be a staycation vacation it could be working when you want to and of course more importantly finally the f- future of well being we are all humans i can retrain the ai and bring it there but a human being if it's not well so it goes in that sequence right a human being needs to have health then it needs to have fitness then only performance comes in you cannot perform yeah. unless you have health and fitness yeah now because generally you know at the start of the pandemic uh, so what happened was the services sector and the other uh, you know sectors they were it was very easy for them to move to you know a work from home or a hybrid uh, system but for manufacturing uh, you know many of the companies they complain that you know to carry on that manufacturing we have to be at the venue and how do we manage that then that was a logistical challenge for many of the companies you know to continue with their production to continue with uh, their but a lot of that problem can be resolved now you know uh, the production can be maintained remotely even you know with fewer people i'm not talking about fewer roles but probably fewer people at the shop floor and rest of the things can be managed you know correct Through- and that is also an enrichment of the work that happens that is also a diversification of the works that happens that also allows us to ensure that things don't uh, you know kind of condense into uh, a tedium or a boredom and you just don't have cost escalating without productivity equivalently escalating because i think any worker that wants to work long time in a sustainable organization and our workforce are almost for life right you join they have, most of them have joined us and have retired many yeah. of them are sixth generation employees so it is an enterprise association it is an intergenerational association and i think all parties understand that unless the core mother which is tata steel its operations its customers who are who are the ones who are paying all our salaries are looked after and satisfied better than what uh, alternatives they have which are ever growing and which are ever becoming more competitive and good uh, we will as an organization not be able to meet our objectives or or meet the potential that our founding fathers uh, clearly impelled and propelled us to get to okay what what is your advice for the uh, you know specifically maybe for the sme sector or a smaller companies you know there could be companies which are large manufacturing bases they will have their own strategy in place you know they will have their own policies in place so i'm saying uh, you know that i mean what i'm uh, saying is there are large companies large business houses they have their own individual policy but you know there are companies which look up to tata steel probably as a benchmark or there as as a place where they can learn from their experiences and all so where and how should they implement you know or where and when should they implement digitalization in their you know manufacturing or at their shop floor uh, you know do you have something to say i think the time to start was yesterday and i'm glad that most of them have started but i think it's a couple of simple steps first yeah. key, create a budget because digital cost money yeah second you might need external help so look at what form and fashion that help works for you the third is make sure that you kind of uh, you know make sure that you kind of go to the cloud that's very important because yeah. you need fourth is concentrate on cyber security and f- fifth is pick up some two or three programs which are driving your key kpis whatever those kpis for the business and then link your use cases to that because that will give you the maximum bang for the buck 
okay and what kind of reskilling or upskilling is required for the existing workforce i, I would say everybody should should see how they can train themselves on chat gpt that has become a very easy question play around with chat gpt understand its potential see how you can bring it to the organization when i say chat gpt i'm saying generative ai as the generative ai is uh, going to take you know is 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 what's going to drive the cycle for the next 3 to 5 years everything else in digital is a broad term and i think done and dusted okay and what about the workforce you know the, the i'm saying the workers at the shop floor you know their uh, level of education might not be that high how I mean, a lot of programs adapt? are available in languages of their choices uh, so they can uh, train themselves they can do vocational courses uh, they can you know inform themselves and they have to know that work 5 years 10 years 15 years from now will look very different meaningful purposeful sustainable work would look very different from what they are accustomed to and i think anybody who of... has curiosity and access to a mobile today yeah uh, can train themselves on just about anything okay but but you see a change you know that the newer generation of workers at the shop floor are they more receptive or you know receptive to these changes or more adaptive to these changes than upskilling and uh, you know than their uh, predecessors things yes and no uh, yes because they are uh, they have the mobile they see the world etc yeah uh, no because you know in order to bring about change you need focus and staying power yeah. and uh, they have they have yet to demonstrate that i'm not saying as an individual but as a generation yeah but but the, uh, you know they uh, aren't they able to see that their their personal growth and benefit from digitalization probably that is there you know there is some mindset gap there but they also have they also have differential uh, uh, you know sometimes they have uh, differential understanding or what constitutes work how they should be treated uh, uh you know other interests that they want to pursue and, and and there's nothing right or wrong about it but i'm just kind of yeah. throwing up that there are a different yeah. set of challenges when dealing with the younger people compared to what we had when dealing with the uh you know uh, uh, with with say the slightly older generation okay. attitude is uh, uh not necessarily correlated with age in either ways great and what has been your you know how has your customers uh, reacted to the entire digitalization process you know probably you know they are more happy with the quality uh, you know the other day i was uh, you know when i was talking to pankaj he said that you know our uh, you know that that quality mismatch or you know some uh, that uh you know deficiency in terms of product output has gone down drastically post you know tqm and tpm yeah so uh i would say that yes that's true so our quality has increased but i would say customers have also become a lot more discerning and tata okay. steel likes to work with discerning customers who challenge them because they bring the overall quality up which benefits all of us and and you know uh if you have customers and they are discerning then you are typically going to have a more sustainable business customers like say you know i can name a numerous of them but let's take toyota yeah. okay uh, you know initially they the first time we were working with them i think they found out some 64 defects Okay. but they did not berate us or down they said we'll work with you to you know uh, kind of take away all of this but the accountability is yours in a certain time you have to come up to standard we will help you in that journey and we'll partner with you in the journey and uh, and you know we have a very healthy and a long relationship with them as with many other customers i mean i'm not singling out toyota but it's an example that uh, you know came to my mind yeah great so and you know my last question what has been the overall uh, you know digitalization experience you have been you know heading that function you have been managing things you know what what is that one sea change that you you know that you think has brought 
in uh, you know at tata steel because of the entire digitalization uh, i have, I have always uh, said this that tata steel changed i have witnessed the change and tata yeah. steel will change even more and hopefully i'll be there to witness that change but i think there are two things one yeah. the use of data has really yeah. increased and tata steel has seen the benefits of it but it has it is it understands it just scratches the surface of how we are using the data and i think the second wave of excitement which is going to come is now uh, particularly i see generative ai allowing us to completely transform how we look at coding how we look at development how we look at consumer interfaces and everything it will take some time it will be a messy journey we'll make some mistakes but it's going to be very very exciting great great talking to you sarajit you know it was uh, a lovely interaction i think you know our viewers would gain some insights from this discussion that we had today thanks for having me and uh, really appreciate your time and i hope uh, if your viewers have any questions then i'm happy to uh, take them when and as they come to you or through whatever source and uh, thank you very much for having me sure great great talk thank you, you.